Hey, welcome. I'm glad you could join me today. We're just going to take a few minutes here. The Church of England has made a historic decision today. This is the culmination of several years, and they've come up and they've had a big meeting. And today, February 9, 2023, they took a vote. They decided they're going to bless same-sex uh, unions, but they also decided we're not really doing same-sex marriages yet. So this, that's, but but we can bless them, but we're not doing them because the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. Let's let's uh, tune up here now. Here's what here's what's going on. We're just gonna walk through. I've got just a few bits I've taken out of the debate today, and clip them out. Uh, just useful. I'm not going to really differentiate between all the different uh, potential emotions and amendments and things that were voted. We're going to put it all in one blob here, but we're going to give you some of the highlights. And I'm just going to uh, respond verbally as we go through. All right, here we go. Learning how to set love in order is costly. Yes. And it does commit us to deconstructing a culture where homophobia is nurtured. And ah. can go and has gone so unchallenged. So they're engaged in Why deconstructing the, the same time culture of homophobia. That's what this is going to do. The doctrine of holy matrimony defined in Canon B30 as an abiding enrichment to the radical inclusion that we seek. We should welcome fellow believers with Cat open arms. Lady. Even fellow believers who don't see things the way we do. For instance, one person is convinced that he can eat anything on the table while another assumes he should be a vegetarian. But so since she's, she's going to give us some exegesis table, on Romans 14. Wouldn't it be terribly rude to criticize what the person next to you is eating? There we God, go. God, after all, invited them both to the table. God invites the... Do you have any business crossing people off the guest list? Everybody to the or table. Or interfering with God's so welcome? If you don't support you are a straight man what the Bible teaches, get married, do you're it. crossing people and off the table, God off the list? Wife. If you are a gay man and you want to get married, do it. And thank God for your husband. Yeah, do whatever Don't you want. Don't insist on your own way. It's God we are answerable to, not each other. In Revelations it says, After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. And I will add genders and sexualities. No, Standing no. Revelation 21, the verse 8. The lamb, clothed oh, come in white on. Robes with palm branches in oh, their wow. hands. I would like to accept the apology as a small step in the right direction. Okay, so yeah, along with this an statement, they make an apology for their uh, I guess, and the homophobic of stuff. Work show a willingness to change and do better. In tackling discrimination and We're going to accept your apology, but the then you've got to give us more. The problem with our insistence on cleaving to scripture, tradition, and reason is that it does not leave much space for the Holy Spirit. Scripture doesn't leave space for what the Holy Spirit. What about the mystical? Jesus himself broke canon law of the time by healing on the Sabbath. What was Sabbath. Jesus' response? Is it better to do good or to do harm? Our current situation is doing harm, serious harm. And anything we do I just to have to pause other, it for a minute here and, and think with you about that. Uh, you know, on the Sabbath. So she's saying that that uh, we gotta. Jesus broke the traditions, uh, but Jesus was following Scripture. <laughs> See, G but if we follow the Scripture, we're 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 hidebound. We're stuck. Uh, the Holy Spirit can't work. Uh, there's kind of a weird dichotomy going on there. I think there for this person mentally. But anyway, we'll we'll leave it. Let's keep it. Christ Himself, as we are all made in His image. I dream of a time when the only, only identity is human and relationships are celebrated equally for commitment, love and faithfulness. As Paul wrote to the Galatian church, there is no longer Jew or... So she's dreaming of a time when the distinctions that God established at creation, because they made them male and female, Genesis cha chapter, which chapter is that? Which chapter? Oh, Genesis chapter one, like the first chapter in the Bible. She's dreaming of a time when things won't be like that. Instead, we'll just be kind of this... Blurry, uh, blurry sea of genders. Free. Okay, now she's sound no like she's quoting uh, the big free. WO text, right? There Galatians no three twenty-seven. Is that so? Female, for all of you are one in Christ. Yep. There's no more male and female. I believe that scripture, tradition, and reason all point us to God's ideal that marriage is between a man and a woman because God wants the best for us. 
That's How did this guy get in the room? We he's, have a distinctive he's supporting him. better story to tell our nation about the joy and wonder of he's supporting him as God intended it. A biblical life, position I'm to live up to God's ideal view of marriage. It's not always been easy. It's been costly and sacrificial. When I lived yes, apart from my girlfriend man. in different homes, and we didn't share a bed until the day we got married. But looking back, right both on. my wife and I, sort of, I are so grateful that we stuck to God's good plan for our lives. That's right. There are thousands of people in That's our right. churches up and down the land who, like me, try to be faithful to God's teaching on marriage, celibacy, and singleness. What message would it give if we suddenly turned away from this message? God's ideal that marriage is exclusively between a man and a woman. Listen to this guy. Gospel, the good news that we proclaim. To drift away from this would create huge issues, not least in mission and evangelism. How can we as churches work together in mission and evangelism when we have increasingly different understandings of the good news of Jesus? As Bishop Angelos helpfully reminded us yesterday, the decisions that we make today have far-reaching implications well beyond this chamber for shared mission and evangelism. Yes, we need to love one another, but we need to remain faithful to the good news of Christ. And we always need to affirm God's perfect plan that marriage is solely between a man and a woman. Thank you. Well, this guy because should be the, I want to the, challenge the archbishop. This idea that the church has always had one fixed doctrine of marriage. Now here comes the our historian. Our today are part of a very long thousand year old tradition of debating oh, this our relationship to same sex unions have been debated for a thousand years and family in the scriptures themselves we see three not two genders being discussed male female and eunuch and there's much scholarly debate oh. about how that last category uh, might uh, map onto the categories that we see no no today. in the scriptures there are not three genders right okay so so males biologically are xy females biologically are xx eunuchs eunuchs biologically are xy so, now this lady's going to get the biggest response, I guarantee it. Jesus um, said the Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. So not, so, not, not be surprised or afraid that our doctrine yes, develops. Yes, if you listen to I the Holy this Spirit. amendment and support the main motion. Well, they like her. You've been very fortunate to have the input from a number of learned people this morning. You've had lawyers, you've had an accountant. Not, not necessarily so, but I'm coming to you with a health generous. warning. Okay, this guy is a GP. It, He's a doctor. It's not health warning. This synod that is the patient, despite chocolates and bladders and other problems, the patient is the worldwide Anglican Communion. Synod, we need to give very careful consideration. Sure In fact, our decisions are going to have on the health of that institution we risk causing them a serious heart attack. True. If we continue with the prayers as they are. The doctor stated. predicts a heart attack if you pass this. I speak as a Global South primate. We in the Global South signed the Declaration of Faith, All right. which contains- This guy's from Egypt. He's really important. In our day, we thank God you, for those- You really need to listen to what he's gonna say. Against teachings and practices that depart from the Orthodox, an historic Anglican heritage from our forebears. That's the Jerusalem Declaration made we by the Global South Primates, about 70 million of the 90 million Anglicans. Conference as the teaching on marriage and sexuality of the Anglican Communion. One of the clauses of resolution states Which is marriage between a man and a woman only. Cannot advise legitimizing or blessing of same-sex unions, nor ordaining those involved in same gender unions. This is our clear view of the GSFA. This is how we understand the scripture, tradition, and reason of the Global Anglican South. Church. Jesus said, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. The Holy Spirit reminds us of Jesus' teaching. I cannot imagine that today we can understand Jesus' teaching better than the apostles or the early church. In our understanding of marriage and sexuality, there is a red line 
we will never cross. Crossing this line of blessing same-sex unions a red line. will Almost. alienate 75% of the Anglican Communion and endanger the ecumenical and That's interfaith dialogue. This shift in practice will lead eventually to impaired and broken communion. We inherited the impaired tradition communion. of We don't take communion together. We're weekend. fractured. That. So please, please. This decision will lead to that. Your unique position as the mother church of the Anglican communion. It is your choice. Yeah, that, that's pretty important stuff. He is telling them. You traditionally in that church, the, the Church of England was the leader, leader of the whole communion. And uh, don't forsake that position. If you take this decision, it's your choice. If you take this decision, you're basically going to break the communion of a global church. So basically, this decision is a referendum on what's more important, the unity and the teaching of, of the long-term teaching of Scripture or what the culture in this in this moment, in this ephemeral, just, just quick moment, what the culture demands right now. Which is more important? They're going to make that decision today. All right. Our God is a God of welcome. And yet there okay. remains still another work of Jesus contained within his radical welcome is unrelenting witness. Contained within his complete grace remains com compelling authority. And held by yes. his all-encompassing love is an eternal, eternal and unshakable truth. Jesus is not divided. He came full of grace and truth. Or as mentioned earlier, radically inclusive, but also radically conservative. Radically and inclusive and radically reason, conservative. I must strongly oppose this motion as amended, for I am deeply concerned that the direction of travel is one that is leading to an abandonment of confidence in the witness, the authority, and the truth of God's word. In essence, moving the Church of England away from her historic formularies. Well, as Archbishop Angelus helpfully noted yesterday, that the distinction between blessing and holy matrimony will sound like a mere technicality. Uh, now, this guy's really got the point here. You guys are making a fake distinction, he says, between marriage and blessing the marriage. And he, he's absolutely right. This is a that may prove too costly. Not because it will lead to three-minute speeches and debates, but it will lead to division and perhaps even death. At the very least, the prayers of love and faith force a false dichotomy that to welcome people is to diminish witness. To show grace is to silence the conscience of truth, and to uphold love is to demote faithfulness. And as a young person who has related and will relate with hundreds and thousands of young people through and in ministry, this false dichotomy implied by this original motion and subsequent speeches baffles us. It does not point us to the cornerstone of Christ, but a wobbly stone of culture. We say we want to grow younger, but as a young, one of the youngest members of this general synod, I'm only growing more confused. And as I close, Synod, I must oppose this motion and ask you search your hearts to do the same. For I fear the cornerstone of Christ the versus the wobbly of stone of culture. Precious love group. Nailed it. Silence in the stories of others. The laity who have four or five times voted for amendments but have been rejected and not listened to by Hearing all the LGBTQ stories. I am. Many of you are not the in this chamber. I believe I am the only ordinance in my college of 236 ordinance here today. The young who need clarity, conviction and courage and the primates and provinces who I hope will still be here after what we have decided today. Well, that remains to be seen. Please oppose this motion. Now we receive this vote in silence. It remains to be seen if they'll hold together after a decision to bless same sex unions. Item 67. Okay, he's going to give the vote. House of Bishops in favour 36. So there's three groups who vote. This is the final vote. Recorded abstentions 2. House of Clergy in favour 111 against 85. Recorded abstentions 3. House of Laity, uh, 103 favors, in favour, favor against it. 92, recorded abstentions 5, so the motion is carried. Passes. Synod, can I first begin by thanking Geoffrey for his excellent chairing of our debate. So they were quiet, he said, he said be quiet while we get the answer. 
the the bishop the bishopress of London London now says uh, okay we're, we're going to thank the chairperson so they're they're very thankful they're thanking the chairperson there it is standing ovation for the chairperson yeah there we go all right that's enough of that so so anyway here's what you have then right so they've made the decision and now by the way i saw this on the internet today that they put, put all this cheering at the end like they were cheering for the thing they passed i think they really were but technically that was a uh, not accurate they were thanking the chairperson and the chairperson did seem pretty neutral in this uh the way he conducted himself so good for him that he was neutral but I don't know if you need a, if you're the chairperson on the day when the church abandons the Bible, I don't know that you need a standing ovation. I don't think that was the best. So anyway, I guess we need to wrap this up here. Won't, won't detain you. The Church of England has made a historic decision today. Uh, they're going to bless same-sex unions uh, and, and, and see make sure that all the, uh, all the lettered people, LGBTQ, uh, are, are very happy. Uh, meanwhile, they're, most of them are unhappy because they won't get their marriage blessed. Uh, meanwhile, the, 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 the vast majority of the communion uh, is looking pretty grim because, because the Global South absolutely has already put out there. And they said it here. They said it. it's a red line. It's a red line. We, this is something we won't do. Uh, and this happened years ago with the Jerusalem Declaration. And today, the, the Church of England and Archbishop Welby and the whole group, they're kind of went ahead anyway. So we're not doing same-sex marriage, so we're doing same-sex blessing. So, you know, sometimes you need some, you, you need a lot of education to get to that spot where uh, you can make these, these very fine-grained distinctions that uh, we'll see, we'll see. We'll see if the uh, Anglicans in India and in Africa and so on, we'll, we'll see if they're okay with that. It's like, okay, well, at least we didn't decide we're going to do same-sex same-sex marriage, but we're going to bless them, and we'll see whether that uh, whether that flies globally or whether this represents uh, the today February nine represents the uh, the moment of the ultimate moment of schism for the global Anglican Church. So there you have it, historic day today, February nine. Uh, marriage is uh, now. There's multiple options for marriage going to be within the Church of England. Uh, take your pick. There you go. Just, just uh, disregard. Just, it's all up to you. Whatever you, whatever you want to do, just, just go ahead and do it, and we'll leave it there. I would pray for this church. Uh, I'm not a member of the Anglican Church, but I'm always sad when the Bible is is trodden down. And so, those that are seeking to be faithful in your communion, may the, may you find your pathway. And uh, I pray in my own church. The Seventh Day Adventist Church that we will continue to be true to Scripture. The pressures of culture are very great, and they are upon us all. And so I hope my church will do better. Time will tell, but let's all be true to the Bible, and God's blessing will be with us. We abandon the Scripture at our own peril, and today the Church of England abandoned the Scriptures at its own peril. A sad day.